This is the four hole challenge. We're down at Golf at Goodwood, the Downs course, and I've got to say, it's a proper, proper golf course. If you haven't, get yourself down here and play. And today, I've been joined by Le God Latisse, Matt Latissier. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Marvellous. Yeah, you could, up for it? Could be warmer. It could be Can warmer. We do this in the summer next time. <laughs> but it could be worse, couldn't yeah. it? It's not bad. No, it's all right. We'll yeah. take this for a uh, January day, won't we? Happy days. Right, let's good do man. this. Oh! How you feeling? It's Monday morning, isn't it? <laughs> Heavy weekend? Uh, no, not too bad. No. Not too bad. Shirts. No, no Malibu this weekend. <laughs> that's all right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's that. all right. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I'll do. First swing on a Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Latiss, that was unbelievable. Right, come on. Not bad. A little bit of draw on it. Perfect. Oh, here we go. Game on. <laughs> I was absolutely bricking it after that. Come on. <laughs> Matt, thanks again, mate, for joining me. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure, really, mate. really, really appreciate nice it. Nice first shot as well, oh, mate. Do you know what I'm buzzing about that? I saw, I saw, I saw yours. yours right? I've got to do well. I've got to do well. But yeah. Two good shots. Um, how long have you been playing for? Um, and what's your handicap? Properly. Uh, yeah. I kind of took it up seriously when I was late 20s, 27, 28. Yeah. Um, and I've been, uh, ever since then, I've been trying to get out a couple of times a week and in the summer a little bit more if I can if I can sneak away and, yeah, yeah. you know, the missus gives me permission. <laughs> Please love that never around. <laughs> and what's uh, your and handicap? my handicap is three at the moment. I three. just got down to three just before oh, Christmas. Me. Wow. Yeah, so I was really chuffed with that. I've, I've been three once before. Yeah. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm still kind of trying to get it lower if I can. I'm, I'm not getting any younger, so it's going to be more and more difficult. Yeah. I appreciate that, but uh, I still think there might be one more improve, one more shot improvement in me. Yeah? Yeah. Do you reckon you could ever get to scratch? Well, I mean, that was always my ambition when I took up playing golf, was, yeah. to, was to try and get down to scratch. But I think to do that, You'd actually have to practice a bit and yeah, dedicate have yeah. loads of lessons and and really go for it. Um, and to be honest, I, I love being able to just come out and play with my mates, nice and social, and uh, and not take it too seriously. A bit, a bit like my football, really. <laughs> <laughs> Don't practice too much and just have a just, laugh. Just turn up and smash it. <laughs> but to get down to three, you must have had quite a few lessons. I take it. Um, not many, actually. Um, Maybe a, maybe a dozen in my life. Wow! Uh, uh, but I've I've always tried to play with players that are better than me. Right. Okay. Uh, and I watch and learn and, and get little tips and things. Um, so uh, a good mate of mine, Richard Bland, obviously played on the European Tour for many years. Yeah. Um, so he was the pro at Stoneham when I first joined um, joined up there. Yeah. Uh, and I've played a, a lot of golf down the years with him, and uh, and I think probably the. I think the most I ever learned was when I actually caddied for him when I was in the European. Uh, he caddied, I caddied three events for him on the European Tour. Wow! And to be inside the ropes and that close to these brilliant players, yeah, and watch their shot selection, especially around the greens, the shots that they chose to play around the greens was the biggest lesson I think I learned. Serious? Mm, yeah. When I caddied for him, I, it was just after I retired from football, so I was 33. Yeah. And I was playing off of eight at the time, uh, and I caddied for him in an event uh, in the Scottish Open, at Loch Lomond it was back then. And within within a month of caddying for him, my handicap came down three shots. That's mad. Yeah, it's just because uh, I, I just started playing different shots from around the greens, little chip shots and, the, and the, the different clubs that they were using. All I would do, you know, I'd get around the green and just want to get my sandwich out, flop it up and yeah. end up knifing it and losing shots. And I was just playing different shots and I just, I like to watch and learn people who are good at their craft. Course management. Course management, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Everyone knows you as the unbelievable footballer and now fantastic pundit. But what was a young Matt Matissio like? Um, obsessed with sport. Yeah? Yeah, I'm absolutely obsessed with sport. My, my entire childhood growing up just revolved. I had three older brothers who were the same, loved, loved their sport. Mum and dad loved their sport. Uh, it was just a, 
a, a mad sports household, and I'd play any any ball sport, any round ball sport. Not that funny oval shape. <laughs> well, the peanut yeah. huggers. Yeah, that was a bit. <laughs> What's you know, that? that was a bit too rough mode. for me that yeah. game. Um, so I'd play. I I played tennis, table tennis. I played uh, hockey. I played cricket to a decent standard. Um, and I think if I if I hadn't become a footballer, I think my my next option after that would have been try to become a cricketer. Yeah. Mm. Batter, bowler. Uh, I used to bat pretty well, and I used to keep wicket. Oh really? Because mm. haven't you played in goal before as well? Didn't you want to be a goalkeeper? Uh, I could play in goal as well. Yeah, I was a pretty decent goalkeeper. I had to. Uh, Matt Lecat. I was using yeah. I was using an emergency goalkeeper once in the Southampton youth team when our goalkeeper never turned up for a game one morning. I ended up going to going in goal at uh, a game against Oxford. Um, let in a couple, but they weren't my fault. <laughs> Never the keeper's fault, is no, it? Exactly. No. But no, it's great fun. Yeah, I always do everything. I could do a bit of everything with the ball, really. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Cool. That balls. Where's Al? Over there, mate. Over oh, there. Yeah. So you've gone. For, you've got three wood. Yeah. And, I've I, got and I'm not sure I can even reach with that. <laughs> and I've got a seven iron. You're laying up here. Yeah. You're talking about course management. I just thought. Yeah, that's sensible. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. It is playing like a par five today. I mean, it's four sixty yards par four. Yep. Le God. <sighs> I tell you what, I, I ain't sure even if I nut this, I can get that there. The three wood. Oh. Oh, it's not drawing. Not a bad strike, though. <laughs> this is some seriously good golf going on here. That's Early all right. Doors. Uh, Matt, you were a footballing genius. Thanks very much. No problem at all. <laughs> no, but when, when I was younger, watching you was it was, it was brilliant. Um, but what age did you realise you had a special talent? Um, I, I can remember the day actually. Um, I was playing in my school football team. It was an under 11s tournament, and I was only in the first year at, at the school. So I was only, I think, I was eight. Yeah. And um, it was a seven aside tournament. So I, I was. I was eight years old playing in the under 11s and we got to the final of the tournament and in the final I scored both the goals and we won 2-1 and, and and at that point I kind of thought you know what? I'm, I'm pretty good at this game <laughs> if I can do that three years uh, below my you know I was three years below the age group I was playing in and, and and winning the game yeah and scoring both the goals it was like I think I want to do this for a living. I want to be a footballer. So from that moment, from, it was from like eight right. years of age. I can remember wanting to be a professional footballer. Wow. Yeah. And who was your footballing hero growing up? Glenn Hoddle was my hero growing up. I, I Glenn was, Hoddle, a, yeah? I was a Spurs fan. Yeah, I was a Spurs fan growing up. So was so was me old man. And um, yeah, I just thought the way that he played football was just out of this world. He just made the game look so easy. Well, very similar to yourself. Yeah. Well, that's I. I, 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 I try to model myself on the way that Glenn played. I, I loved the 40 yard passes. Yeah. I just, you know, the, the weight of pass that he had, the way that he could volley the ball. Yeah. Some of the goals, spectacular goals he scored. That was all stuff that I would go out and practice in the, in the, garden. School, in the garden, in the in my, on my estate, down my school playing field. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, I just thought he was, he was a wonderful footballer. Amazing. So he was your hero growing up. Yep. So, how weird was that when he became your manager and obviously England manager and left you out of the World Cup squad? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you can't leave me out of the squad, you were my hero. I idolised you. <laughs> what are you doing, Glenn? It was a, it was a bit disappointing, yeah. It, it, it was... Uh, they do say never meet your heroes, they, don't they? They do indeed, they do indeed. <laughs> uh, and it, it was a bit sad. And then he became Southampton manager as well after, after he, the England stuff as well. So that was a little bit awkward. Yeah, um, yeah and we, we didn't really kind of see eye to eye as people which was a bit of a shame what about now that's all right now yeah yeah we had we had a bit of a chat a few years back and uh cleared the air a little bit but what was that like walking in because you score you score a hat trick for england b you, you go you not you must be going i think he days, left right? before the third one went in apparently <laughs> really yeah he must Absolute have thought he two. <laughs> liberty i know shocking then you walk in the office you're thinking i'm getting the call up here and then what well, it, it wasn't like that. I, I was actually uh, at the end of the season. I, I'd gone back to Guernsey for a few days, um, and the preliminary squad of thirty was announced that we're going to go to La Manga. Yeah. Um, and it was announced on, uh, and my my brother actually came in. He went, "You're not in the squad." He said, "It's just been announced on Teletext 
that's how long ago it was. <laughs> teletext, I love teletext. <laughs> teletext, and, uh, and he said, he said, yeah, you're not in the squad. So and that's how I found out. Did you go stop winding me up? Stop being a. D mm, no, you must, you must have thought you were in the squad. Uh, Come on. I thought I would have been in with a chance of making the 30 that went to the manga after yeah. after doing that. Um, but you know, he obviously had a, a squad in mind that he wanted to take, and, and I actually thought he was going to he was leaving me out because he was going to take Gaza. Right, because Gaza went to, to the manga. Play, he could play, couldn't he? And you know, I, if there's one player that I wouldn't mind being left out of a team for, yeah. you know, you could understand exactly uh, the boy with that talent. And then he left Gaza out as well, and he smashed up the place. It, <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad decision from Glenn. Oh, nutted it! No. Spin. Oh, absolute nutbush city limits. Do you want a little bit of advice? Yeah, please. Um, for that club yeah. and that shot, the ball was way too far forward in your stance. It, it, that, the way you set up there yeah. should be the way you set up to hit a driver. The ball needs to get back in your stance a little bit. Can you bit. show me? Yeah, sure. Please. If you come and stand where I'm stood, yeah. I'll show you what you did. Go and stand there. Stand here. Yeah, give me the ball. The problem is I get taught and then I forget. So when you set up then, you were set up like this. Yeah. And like this. Now that ball was on the, in line with the inside of your heel, which is where it should be when you're hitting a driver. For right. this club, it, in needs the middle. To, it needs to be back there, in the middle. Ah. And then you won't hit that shot so many times. Okay. So just have, a, have another go. Thanks mate. So in the middle, get the feet aimed up. Oh yeah, much better. I'll be honest, I got a little bit lucky there. <laughs> How? How did you get lucky? Because I was meant to pitch it a, a bit further up. Yeah. And because I pitched it short, it hit the downslope and shot forward. Right. So I got a bit lucky. You create your own luck in this game, man. That's exactly right. <laughs> Not too far forward in your stance. Or oh, am I taking the right club here? What have you got? I've got a 60. Should I pitch and wedge it? Little runner. No, you've got got to get some elevation on it. So yeah. Look. Try and land it yeah, on the Yeah, th no, I think I'd, I'd take that club yeah, from okay. here, yeah. So, Middle East stance. Yeah. I think you're, you're looking to pitch it about here. There, yeah, all right. Yeah? Yep. Stay down on it. Ooh, a couple of yards short. Not bad though. Oh. Come around. Oh. Woo! I can have it. Was coming round. You can have that one. <sighs> Thank you, sir. The bogey, oh. is one nil up on the four-hole challenge. 154 yards, a little bit uphill, a little bit into the wind. What are you going for? You hit it a long way, didn't you? No, I don't. Do not? I used to. I'm getting old, mate. I'm getting old. You're in, you know what, you're in quite good shape, though. Ah. I did play five-a-side football on Friday night, and I'm still a bit stiff from that. <laughs> it's Monday morning. Do you still say so you still regularly play five-a-side and stuff? So we play, yeah. I, I try and play a little bit five-a-side, and we have a few eleven-a-side charity matches that yeah. we play as our ex-players. Eleven down at Southampton, so we do a few of those a year. So I quite enjoy it. We just started um, uh, trying to do a more regular five-a-side with just the ex-players. 
Right. So we had our first game, and that was our first game Friday night, where it was just me and a load of lads that I was, you know, a load of my old teammates and a few of the boys that were I was apprentices with that didn't quite make it as well. Yeah. It was good fun. So it's not five of you just turn up at like a goals league? Imagine, no. Imagine that. No, we just had a I friendly amongst ma- ourselves. <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> game yeah. off. Game quite, off. Quite a good team the other day. Who was on your team? Uh, James Beatty was on my team. Um, who else did we have there the other night? Brian Howard played. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, Brian didn't play Friday. He's playing the next one. Um, uh, Franny missed out this time. Uh, I'm just trying to think who else was playing. So lads that I was apprentices with, like uh, Mark Blake, yeah. uh, Andy Cook, um, Nicky Banger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what was, a team, by the way. Yeah, it was nice. It was good. Good turnout. Good crack. Yeah. Still feeling it now, though. Still feeling it now. <laughs> Three days later. Yeah. <laughs> so this is probably the weakest part of my game. So you might have a chance here. Right. There you go. Bunker. Oh, no, it's just kept out. Oh, did it stay up? Just kept out, yeah. Wow. Go on. He's done well. Go on. He's done well. He's done well. He's done well. He's only stuck it on the dance floor. (laughs) On the dancing, come on. What makes me so happy? Matt, you had loads of uh, admirers throughout your footballing career, but the best one has got to be Zavi. Yeah. <laughs> Zavi. Yeah, that was nice, that. Uh, you were one of his childhood heroes. I know, yeah, it was just, that was amazing to read that. Um, it was just, for me, I mean, I didn't even realise that, you know, they watched English football back in, yeah. in Spain back then, do you know what I mean? Uh, so for him, somebody who's as good as he was to come out and say, all those nice things about me was was amazing. Uh, so yeah, that, that was pretty special. I also had a um, uh, last year. I played in the BMW Pro Am at Wentworth. Yeah. And I was partnered in a team with Pep Guardiola. Oh yeah. Yeah. And um, and so I got there early. It was like an eight o'clock tee off time. So we're, I'm on the putting green having a little practice. And Pep hadn't showed up yet. And uh, I had my mate Gordon Watson caddying for me. Yeah. He was my teammate at Saints. He was my caddy. And so we were practicing a few putts on the green and then Pep uh, walked onto the putting green. So I thought, I'm just going to introduce myself. And uh, so I walked over and I went, uh, I went, Pep, Matt and Tissy, I'm playing with you today. And he went, you don't have to introduce yourself to me. He said, I can remember you scoring all those goals from 40 yards. <laughs> and I looked at Gordon Watson, I went, did you hear that? Did you hear that? <laughs> Pep Guardiola knows me. <laughs> Yeah, it's in. incredible. <laughs> really? Yeah. And he was brilliant. We had, we had a lovely round. Yeah. Um, it was a fantastic company. Really enjoyable. And uh, yeah, really, really. And he swings a golf club pretty well. Yeah, I, I spoke to him about golf he, before. He said he's about 18. Is that fair? Was he, yeah, I think yeah. he was a bit lower than that, I think. Right. <laughs> he's certainly got the potential to be lower than that. His swing was not bad. I don't think he plays obviously that often because he's so dedicated yeah. in his job. Absolutely. Um, but I think if he was to have a sabbatical, and uh, and take up golf properly, uh, I think he'd probably be down the single figures pretty quick. There it is. What was his banter like? Uh, it was all right actually. Yeah. Uh, he was quite relaxed is, that is, day. Is quite, yeah, because I mean he strikes intense, me as quite an intense person. Yeah, um, but I think he was in in quite a relaxed frame of mind that day. And we had we had a nice day. Wicked, love it. Go cool. on, Pep. Love to get him on the old four hole. Come my... on, guys, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Told you my chipping had improved. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because you brought your dad along? Uh, oh, absolutely. That's for you, Dad. <laughs> oh. uphill, uphill and into the wind. Yeah. Don't forget to give it some. Oh, oh. smooth. Oh, you're giving it to me. Thank you. <laughs> smooth. Nice putt. Good Matt putt. Lattis. But yes, I got a par. Another long par four, Matt. Yep. 
tough holes you've picked. It's in trouble. There's the pressure of having the GoPro looking at me that from that <laughs> close. Blame the GoPro. <laughs> Couldn't handle it. <laughs> right, come on. Oh. Forward! Matt, it's me all right to the down left. There. Me to the right. I want to go straight down the middle with you. <laughs> ah! Um, you spent the whole of your career at your beloved Southampton. I did. Do you regret not going to a bigger club? Not for one minute. No? Not for one minute. Fair no, dude. no I, I had chances, but do you know what? I loved every second of my time down at Southampton, and if I had my career again, I'd probably make exactly again. the same choices. You know, it was, I was really proud that I played my whole career in the top flight. Yep. Um, given the battles that we were in some years, it was you know quite an achievement at times to just to stay in that Premier League. and. Um, I think it's nice to be able to leave a legacy at a football club as opposed Absolutely. to, you know, go somewhere for a couple of years, win a couple of trophies, go somewhere else for a few more quid and um, and people kind of don't have the same feeling for you. So I'm, I'm proud of what I did at Southampton. There's not many loyal people like yourself, is there really? Um, no, there's been a few down the years and, and they'll continue to be. Yeah, I mean it is. but. Everyone's different, mate, and, and I have no problem with people who do that and who want to go and earn more money. If that's if that's what they want out of their life, then absolutely 100% go yeah. for it, you know? And if you want to be at a club that's challenging for trophies and that's your thing, then absolutely do that. Um, I think my thing was, I, I was at Southampton, I would have been incredibly proud to have won a trophy with Southampton. Um, obviously, we didn't, we didn't get to do that. Uh, but it wasn't for the lack of trying, yeah. you know, and, and you, I'm not sure I would have got that much enjoyment out of signing for the best team in the country that you know are going to win a trophy in, in a season because they were probably going to win a trophy without you there anyway. So you know, I think if I'd have managed to have done that with Southampton, it would have been a much bigger achievement. Do you think it would have made you a better player? Um, Playing with better players, yeah, no disrespect to your teammates yeah. at Southampton. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I think there's, there's probably... Um, an element of truth in that. I think you. It, it's not. I'm not sure even if it if it makes you a better player. I think sometimes you're just perceived as a better player because you're playing in a better team and winning more often than not. Yeah. Um, and I think you're then perceived as a as a much better player. Um, to be honest, I had some seasons at Southampton there where I'm not sure I could have played much better. Uh, you know, had a couple of years in the Jack, mid-90s yeah. where it was like, I scored 25 goals in 93-94, I followed that up with 30 the following season. I wasn't even playing as a centre forward. Um, so I'm not sure even if I was playing in another team, I could have bettered that to be honest. Eight England caps, absolute joke. I mean, congratulations. I'm, I'm quite proud <laughs> of them actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you know what I meant. I mean, I know, only eight England caps. I mean, come on. Yeah, and I think that was that that was probably one of the things that uh, was the downside about staying in Southampton. Yeah. Is I think it definitely hindered the opportunities that I got as an England player for sure. I only started three matches. One of them was abandoned after 27 minutes in Dublin for the for the crowd trouble back yeah. in '95, I think it was. Um, so yeah, I, I I felt like the the ability that I had. I think warranted more than just a, a couple of starts in an English year. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me about uh, the Mackintosh diet. Yo, Mackie D's, <laughs> D's on the way to training. What a G. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't every day, don't get me wrong. <laughs> that is superb. But yeah, I did. I, I scored to... 30 goals a season. <laughs> Give me a sausage McMuffin. <laughs> I did used to have sausage egg McMuffins on the way to training. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, it was just different times back then. You know, people didn't take things so seriously as they do now. You know, yeah. you were allowed a little bit more leeway. Not everything was yeah. controlled. Uh, you know, we didn't we didn't eat at the at the football club the whole time. And, you know, your, your diet wasn't scrutinised. We were weighed on a Monday and a Friday every week. All right. Okay. So the only criteria that they had was that you know you had to be somewhere near your normal weight. Yeah. They had no care for how that weight was made up. So you know. Body fat percentage wasn't a thing back in our day. No. You know, they, we didn't have trackers that tell you how many 
kilometres you ran in a, in a football match, yeah. thank Christ. <laughs> and, uh, and so all you had to do was make sure on a Monday and a Friday that your weight was, you know, somewhere near where they expect you to be. Fair do then. So, you know, if I was struggling, maybe if I'd had a heavy weekend on a Sunday night, I'd go to the local health club and sit in the sauna for like 40 minutes and just sweat it all out, get on the scales the next morning, happy days. But training on muffins in your stomach, weren't you one around going, oh, I'm Do you know what, there was, there was a couple of times actually <laughs> where I did, where I did leave it a little bit too late, so I'd, I'd have these two sausage table muffins and like within 20 minutes I'd be out on the training ground and when I started warming up I'd get like these dizzy spells where I was just like oh I don't feel very good here what's, what's all that about and, I, and I, I had one of these spells and the physio came over and he went you're right I'm like, no, I feel a bit I feel a bit dizzy he went did you have breakfast this morning I went yeah he went what did you have well, I had two sausage egg muffins on the way to the train. I was finishing them in my car as I drove in the car park. He went, yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> Lagod is in a bit of trubs. Shrubs, trubs. Ah. This isn't good. Ah. Shh, 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 shh. I just have to try and Ooh. nudge it out there if I can. Not much of a gap there though, this could be dangerous. You going for a stand back, shot? stand back. Watch the rebounds. This goes a little bit lower than that. Yeah, careful. Oh! Worried about that. Glorious Goodwood. <laughs> oh, I thought he hasn't, has he? Oh, I've got it, I've got it. That's out. That's all right. Oh, that is decent. Now, if there's any kind of man, I'd probably try and hit the green, but I'm not any kind of man. I'm just going to lay up because I want the win. Safety first. Safety first. So all your years at Southampton, Matt, mm. um, who's your favourite manager you played under? Oh, Alan Ball stands out for Legend. me. Yeah, I had nine managers at Southampton in those uh, 16 years. But the 18 months that Ball was my manager was the, the best 18 months of my career. It yeah. was just amazing to have a manager who obviously done what he'd done in the game, you know, World Cup winner, um, absolute superb footballer. And yeah, he was stood there saying how good a footballer I was and that really kind of set my confidence levels through the roof you know I was a fairly confident bloke anyway uh, but when you've got a bloke like that who believes in you and wants to build the team around you yeah it was just amazing it really was didn't he just let you do what you wanted like, like, much, I've heard he, one story he, that you, yeah. you were at night clubbing once and everyone else got oh, a rollicking yeah. and you just got don't worry about it <laughs> like, just do what you want mate he did he, he, he did he just went he took me to one side after he given everyone a rollicking and went you can do whatever you want. He said, the way you're playing, you can do whatever you want. Get yourself to bed. And it was, How did he it, find out you are in a nightclub? Uh, um, the nightclub was right next door to his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the DJ in the nightclub, as all the lads were coming into the nightclub, was introducing us over the microphone. Serious? And Borley could hear him, yeah. What's it, you're walking, in, <laughs> so, so, walking into the football store now with Matt Letizia? Yeah, it was a bit like that. It was. <laughs> And, uh, and Borley had obviously uh, clocked what was going on and when we started rolling he was waiting in reception for us. Ah. So yeah. I thought he'd be in there with you. He should have been really. Yeah. He was already, he'd, he'd already been drinking during the day and he'd, he'd done his quota for the day and <laughs> really? gone to bed. Couple of afternoons, <laughs> right, okay, got you, got you. But yeah, no, he was brilliant. And he, he, he kind of, he, he literally said to every other player in the team, whenever you get the ball, first thing I want you to do is try and give the ball to Matt Tizio. And I was like, oh, that'll do for me. It was like being back in my school team again. <laughs> Did that annoy any of the other players, though? Uh, not when we were winning. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the, the good thing was is that it, it kind of worked straight away. So the first game he did it, 
we, we were playing Newcastle away, we were pretty much, I think we were bottom of the league or second bottom of the league at the time. Yeah. Uh, and we played away at Newcastle and it was just, just before that game is what he did and he, he put me in the middle of the pitch and he said, like, whenever you get the ball, first thing in your mind, try and get it to him because he's your best player and he's our best chance of getting out of trouble. Wow. And that was literally what he said. So we went to Newcastle, um, who were, you know, decent team yeah. at the time, 93-94. Uh, and we went up there and won two one, and I, I set one up and scored the other one. And so the lads kind of went no, no, actually it, fair, it, it fair play. And I, and I then went on and scored. Um, I think I scored like fifteen goals in the last nineteen games or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, there was no complaints at that point. And then the following season, I, I scored thirty. The next season, so they couldn't really. So they, they give it to the system all worked. Yeah, exactly. They give, a lot give, of pressure on you, though. It's a lot it, of pressure was, on you. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I, I, I liked the pressure. Uh, you know, and that's why I, I enjoyed taking penalties as well. I, I kind of enjoyed those moments. Yeah. And I looked forward to them as opposed to being daunted by them. Fair enough. Just if you feel talking the pressure about, of this shot. Talking yeah. about being daunted by this moment. <laughs> I'm a shot down to you, and you're closer than I am. This is going to be a tough one. Very, Not very bad. Good. A little bit lower than I intended, but I'll take that all day. I'll on. take that. Good shot. Oh, oh no. the pressure! I do that on a regular occurrence. Right, come on. Come on. So this is my full shot, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I've had four as well. So after this one. That's better. That's better. Oh! Nice chip. Come on, Tiz. Put him under pressure. Oh! oh. That for the win. Oh, this is for the win. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, mate. I'm absolutely. <laughs> you don't look nervous, it's fine. <laughs> right, come on, over the hoop, just. Oh, <laughs> no! Oh. He's robbed! Oh. Le God, still one up on the four hole challenge. Idiot! I'm lucky, mate. I'm lucky. Oh. There's Rob from Goodwood. He's the man who sorted it all out. And he's the man, Mr. Letitia, everyone. Go on! <laughs> it. Who was the uh, biggest character you played with in your career? Um. I think there was, there was a few down the years. Um, I think one of the funniest double acts I ever saw in our, in our changing room um, was Ian Dowie and Tim Flowers. Oh, they were really brilliant good. together. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. They would just slaughter everybody. <laughs> they had, and, and there were such, such big characters yeah. to have in the changing room. Um, they were brilliant in a, in a relegation scrap like we were in. Um, and the banter was just non-stop with them they were constantly abusing people for you know you had to be so careful about what you wore into training really oh it was just brutal yeah they would just pick the smallest thing about something that you've got on and just <laughs> absolutely pummel you for it um but they were they brilliant they were brilliant together and all that were, oh no, no no it wasn't you know we didn't really go into into the stupid practical jokes it was more it was more verbal, verbal. yeah very much and it was a it was a brutal change room at times yeah it really was yeah it was <laughs> You had to be, you know, you had to be quite strong uh, mentally, mentally strong, yeah. to, to be able to cope with it sometimes. Because, yeah, they just didn't let up. They just did not let <laughs> just up. Constant. Every single day, yeah. you know, it was just a, whatever the smallest bit they could find, they would just jump on it and kill you for it. Did anyone ever break? It just got bad enough. No, <laughs> it, was all, it was all in good spirits. And, uh, and you, what, what it taught you to do was 
was be sharp with the replies. So you yeah. kind of, you know, found it, found out little bits about them that you could hammer them about and and just stick to it. And obviously, uh, it was great with Tim because Tim Tim was just always at it the whole time. And when he left Southampton, yeah. he said to me, "I wished him all the best," you know. And he, and he went, "You'll never score past me, son." <laughs> Like that when yeah. he left, and I was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> <laughs> so the following, yeah. So later that season, like, we had a penalty against uh, against him. Yeah. Against, when he was playing for Blackburn, and I scored the penalty, sent him the wrong way, give him a load of verbals when I scored the penalty, and then uh, and I went after the game. I went, "Didn't think I was ever going to score last year." Really? And he went, "Penalties don't count." Oh, well, come and on! And I went. All oh, right, OK, fair enough. So the next season we went to Ewood Park and I smashed in that one from that 35 was, yards. That was against him, wasn't it? That was against Tim, yeah. Oh, amazing. So, so that was, <laughs> what did you say after that, that one? Nice. After I, I did go, well, if penalties don't count, what about that? What about the 35-yard yeah, screamer? The worst thing was we lost 3-2 that game. So uh, he just turned around and he went, how many points did you get today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair point, Tim. Killed me, killed me. Still did it, though. I know, I don't talk to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Good lad, really good lad. Doing all right as manager at Sullyhall as well, is he? He is. The cat, yeah, he's doing pretty well. Do you, have you never fancied management? Not really. No? No. It's a full-time job. I've never had one of them. <laughs> no, true. I don't want to start now. I'm 51. <laughs> do, you, do you think you'd be good, though? Uh, I think I'd be all right. I think I'd be all right. I just didn't have the inclination to kind of go out and have the dedication to go and get all the coaching badges and all that stuff. It's quite a long process to get all to get qualified and I didn't really have enough enthusiasm right. and desire to want to be a manager to go through that process to get me there. Do you find it weird that like, you know, because you were a top class footballer, you have to go and get coached off coaches telling you how to do like five yard passes and stuff. I, yeah, I that, think I'd I think find that quite hard. Yeah, that was one of the things that probably frustrated me about it all because I did start my coaching badges. Right, oh, okay. I did, yeah. I, and after a few weeks, it was just, it was, it was literally that. It was literally the coach saying, trying to coach you how to pass the ball five yards with your side foot. And I was like, really? I mean, I, I can kind of teach that. Yeah. I, mean, I don't really need, and it is, a, it was a little bit like that, but obviously it's a lot deeper than that. And of course, of as, course. The, as the badges go on, it's a, it's a bit more complex and, and there's a lot of things you would learn. Yeah. Um, from those coaching badges, but just at that level where where you went in, you have to start. Yeah. Kind of didn't fill me with any enthusiasm. Yeah. So you got on the golf course instead. Absolutely. Happy days. Absolutely. And free handicap. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute zinger. Oh no! Missed the sand. Oh, it's over the sand, isn't it? Went over, didn't it? Don't know. If I ever needed a good drive, it's now. Oh, not bad. That's all right out there. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, stop. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. You okay? Yep. Nice lie on the path. You get a drop off that path, you're yeah. right. Happy days. Game on. Right, I've just seen this, Matt. Um, this is class. Talk me through this ball marker. This is my Augusta National Golf Club ball marker. So a couple of years ago, um, I was very fortunate that uh, my mate Richard Bland, yeah. um, he played in the Dunhill Links with a, uh, an amateur partner right. who was uh, a member at Augusta who invited Richard back to Augusta to play it with him. And uh, he said to Richard, if you want to bring a couple of mates along, bring a couple of mates along. So one day I got a text and all the text said was, do you fancy playing Augusta? I don't want to know the reply. At that point, I didn't reply with a text message. I rang him up because <laughs> I thought, there's no way I'm like sending a message it doesn't get through and he asked someone else. Yeah, so right. I rang him and I went, yeah. He went, do you not need to clear it with the missus? No. I went, no, <laughs> not for Augusta. <laughs> no, I don't. Not for Augusta. Amazing, how so was we, it? So we played, uh, we had 36 holes in a day there. It was absolutely amazing, the best golfing experience of my entire life yeah yeah just incredible how'd you play um it was tough uh, i shot 82 in the morning so that was 10 over par um, and i was actually 10 over par after nine holes oh, i wow, played the back nine in level par i made two twos on the back nine yeah the first round and i made another two at 12 the little par three over the water yeah uh, so I, I birdied that both 
times I played it. So it was just, yeah, that was my, the highlight of my week. You must have been buzzing with that. Oh, it was just incredible. Yeah? It really was, yeah. Um, and the, it, the, I have one video taken from when, I, from when I was on the course. Yeah. So Richard took a video of me playing my shot. And the one shot they chose to, to video was my second shot, uh, my second round, my tee shot into that 12th hole. And I put it to about that far away. <laughs> have you got that video? Yeah, yeah. Can it's I put phone. that video on this channel? Yeah, yeah. So you sent it to me afterwards, right? Yeah, I'll send it to you, right. yeah. People at home, we'll put that video right here. And going back to Southampton, Southampton's greatest ever player, yourself, got sobbed off for Southampton's worst <laughs> ever player, Ali Dyer. Ali Dyer, yes. How did that happen? I have no idea how he got away with that. I really don't. I mean, the phone call came in from, from George Weir's cousin, uh, from George Weir, apparently, into our training ground. Uh, still don't know who actually was on the end of that phone. Uh, but Graham Soonis um, accepted it as, as that it was genuine and uh, he came in, trained a couple of days. To be honest, uh, it didn't really look that good in training and I was kind of thinking, does this fella want a competition to come and train with us? Um, and then we were playing Leeds on the Saturday and after about 20, 25 minutes I got injured yeah. um, and he was, <laughs> he'd been put on the bench for the game, which again was a bit of a shock to us all. Uh, and when I got injured, I was amazed when I looked up and saw who was coming on for me. Uh, so on he came, played for about, I, don't know, I think he played 45, 50 minutes, I suppose, before Graham soon as <laughs> decided enough. enough's enough and uh, off you come. And that was the last we ever saw him. He never came into training again. He left, just did a runner. What a guy. Just <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> Can you imagine getting away with that in this day and age? Yeah, but how, how do you fall for that? If someone like George Weyer phones up and you've got to think, we should double check this. This is George Weyer. You just go, all right, George, yeah, bring him down. Mad I know. How it, got it, is, it. it is mad. You'll have to get Graham Soonis to do this and ask him about it. <laughs> have you ever asked him about him since? Not yet. I've not been brave enough yet. I was, I was with him last week as well. <laughs> You'll go absolutely mad. I really should do. <laughs> Matt is playing in the bunker. Well out. That's all I could do, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I love golf. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm under right. a bit of pressure here, aren't I? Oh, mate, I can't believe that. Nice shot. Can't believe it. Thank you. I've slapped it. Go! Dancing. It's the final question, Matt, and a question that I ask absolutely everyone on the uh, four hole challenge. Okay. If you could have a caddy for the day, anyone Ooh. past or present to be your caddy for the day. Oh yeah. Who would it be? Good question. Um, I think I would probably have to take Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods? Yeah. I think to be able to get an insight into what goes through his head on a golf course, I think would be really good. Yeah. Uh, I think with what he's, what he's done and what he's been through, I think the the mental toughness he's had to have to come through all that. Um, I think uh, I think that would be fascinating to get an insight to how he thinks on a golf course. I wonder what does go through his head on a golf course because he's got because he's got the whole crowd following him Absolutely. at all times, and there's other Absolutely. his competitors have got you know still a few, <laughs> but no, nowhere near as many no, as him. No, it is That's incredible, but, hard, isn't it? but some people. Some people like that. I, pre I must admit, I preferred that. I preferred to be playing in front of 70,000 than playing in front of 5,000. And it's, a, it's kind of a mindset, really, of, you know, if you're comfortable in that environment and you, yeah. and you want to be a bit of a show-off, then the more people that see it, the better. Yeah. That's the way it kind of, that's the way I looked at it. But 
do you think, I suppose it's not that different, but I was saying with golf, they can be like here and like just constantly going, oh, great shot, man, great shot. Whereas football, they're a bit farther away and you don't, do you not really take much notice of them when you're playing football? Um, you, you hear, especially when the ball is out of play, you can hear stuff. Yeah. Um, whether you, whether you take any notice of it is up to you. Yeah. Uh, I, I tended to not really get that bothered by the abuse that came from the crowd. I just used Did you to get take much it, abuse though? Take it in the manner it was intended. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I've had thirty thousand people singing. Big nose. He's got a big nose. <laughs> yeah. And it, you just take it in the manner that it's intended and just have a bit of a laugh back with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you, that's all you got to do. Not very nice though, is it? It's not, but you're not going to be able to fight 30,000 people singing that either, so you no. might as well just go with the flow. And you can't shake your nose either, can you? Well, you can with surgery these yeah, days, but do you know dangerous, what? dangerous, that. Take me as you find me. I exactly, really care. love that. <laughs> oh, he's left it short. Oh! So is this for the win? You got that for the win, yeah. Oh, to tie the match. What are you going for? I think it's a little bit right to left. I think you're right. Great effort. <laughs> Matt Latiss to win. Get in there. That was the whole challenge. That was the legend. Matt Latiss. Thanks good so effort, much mate. Good for good for having me again. Great course. That was good fun, wasn't it? Brilliant fun, mate. Yeah. Brilliant fun. Thanks yeah. so much for doing it. Great effort as well. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Good. Please like and subscribe. It'll be well good. Thanks. Oh, <laughs>